When you're working with making crates, I had to buy a vertical saw because of the studio space, it's small. So this way I could take a piece of plywood, measure it up and do quick cuts. Um, not the most accurate way to do it this way, but I find that it works well. So this is an example of a box that I'd make for a 30 by 30 inch sculpture. I have these little legs on it. This is a very, very strong crate. It is glued. I have a nail gun um, and I also use screws and uh, I put extra support up here so that when the lid's uh, bolted on, um, there's lots of places to screw it into the top. So this again will be lined with two inch foam top and bottom and it should work well for my piece to fit inside. This is probably about close to the maximum size that UPS or FedEx can handle. Any crate bigger than this, and most of my crates I ship out are bigger than this, have to be trucked out, so it has to go through a different type of freight system. Now UPS and FedEx also have a freight, but I use usually brokerages out of the states where they'll look for the best price, and also for quality carriers, you know, it's a little bit of a combination, and then you will insure it. And, and a lot of times when you insure crates like this, it'll be insured through a, a third-party insurance company, you give yourself a little bit of extra protection. I would say this is about the borderline where I'd make a crate. Anything smaller than 24 by 24, I would just pack up in a box and uh, use styrofoam to support it and, and put lots of paper and bubble wrap. But with a crate like this, I can almost guarantee that it's gonna arrive safely because that's the most important thing when it goes to a client is they don't wanna have it broken because insurance is difficult to claim and with higher value products, they don't always pay the full amount if something happens to it. Basically what I do is I buy foam products, usually two inch foam in larger sheets, and I cut it down to fit the crate exactly. Uh, so there'll be foam on all sides. Once I have the foam fitted into a wooden crate, which is uh, in most cases made out of plywood in my other studio, and I make it to fit the glass piece. I usually try to give it three inches on each side larger than the piece. So I have room for my foam and the piece can sort of float inside, not be too compressed. So this is just typical large bubbles and I'll put a, a little bit around the, uh, the glass piece. Now this isn't going to really protect it too much, it's just going to give it some extra filling in the box. The real protection of this is the fact that there's two inches of really good foam that's around it and the fact that it's in a wooden crate that can't be compressed. And you could use a box for this, the problem is it's going to be a large box. The larger the box means it's going to be on the bottom of the truck and they're going to pile all these other boxes on top of it. Once the box compresses, you could break glass. Now this is a very thick bowl, it's pretty strong. It would probably survive in a box, but I don't like to take a risk because the piece is almost $3,000 as a retail price. Also in a box, if it's a more fragile piece, I guarantee it's gonna be very difficult to arrive safely because uh, boxes will change dimensions. I have to do this. If I don't feel that it's quite right, no, no, no. take it out, redo it. I've done it before where I think it should be fine and you ship it anyways. It breaks your heart because of, it's not just the value, it's the fact that it's a one of my kind piece that you made for a client that is, is beautiful that can get destroyed, right? So, so I think this is just sticking too much with that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to uh, wrap it a little bit differently and then put some paper in the bottom part here. a little bit better. Yep. And that way you can put paper around all the edges of it so it's cushioned in there really nicely. It's always nice to send Canadian newspapers to the States so you can read about our politics. Because I'll never hear about Canadian politics on an American newspaper. <laughs> now, let's put another piece of foam there. and then uh, the paperwork just gets put in. Unfortunately, with Fragile and Crate Up and Place This Way, they don't read labels on crates other than the shipping documents. They don't care if it's fragile, they don't even notice it. Most of these things will end up on conveyor systems and be handled quite a bit. little thing like this, which most people you wouldn't even think about is, in Canada we have a thing called Robinson screws, 
which are widely used here and people have the red robins and screwdrivers. In the States, I think they're available, but it's not popular. So I always use the Phillips screws when I send stuff to the States so, so people can open the crate because if you use something that's not compatible with what they have, they may get the crate and they don't have the proper screwdriver or the bits to open it. So you have to kind of look at where you're shipping it to and make sure that what you're sending is compatible. Same with electrical. If you send something that's artistic, that plugs into a wall because there's lights on it, you kind of have to check to make sure that you're approved for their country or that it has the proper plugs and, and electricity requirements as well. One other thing that uh, I put on the bottom here is these little, little legs just to prevent it from tipping over. 